Yes. Yeah. Good morning to all of you. Today I will take you mainly on the one topic that is tissue, and uh, this tissue it is uh, concerned with the class nine. Though the tissue can be studied by anyone, but this is specifically this entire subject has been taken for the class nine as per their syllabus. So before directly go to the tissue, one understanding is very clear that in the last chapter, in the last class, we have studied about the cells. What is the the smallest structural and functional unit of our body, any living organism? So the cells, when there is a cells, cells actually the number of cells constitute the tissue. Then the similar tissue form the organs. Then some of the organs it form the systems, and there are the many system in an organism. This is a generally this is a sequence of any living organism. I have mentioned here that should be very clear. Cells make the tissue, tissue makes the organ, organ makes the system, and system makes the organism. Right. So now first question is that in last chapter we described about the tissue, uh, about the cells. Now we'll describe about the tissue. How it can be defined? First question generally comes. So we can define tissue in many ways, but one of the simplest I feel that can be defined as it can be defined as a group of specialized cells. It means is a group of specialized cells with the similar structure working together to form perform a common functions. It means. Group of cells. If you take the group of cells, but their functions are not similar, we cannot call them as a tissue. But when the cells are specialized with a similar structure, specialized similar structure, and working together to perform a common functions, is called the tissue. There is a basic difference. Now, if I study the tissue, if I uh, analyze the tissue. This tissue can be divided into uh, one is a plant tissue, another is the animal tissue. Today we'll uh, confine to only the plant tissue. Next classes will take the animal tissue. So let us focus on this plant tissue. How the plant tissue has been categorized or it has been divided. First, the plant tissue is divided into two parts. Two types can be: it is a meristematic tissue, it is a permanent tissue. Meristematic tissue further can be divided into apical, lateral, and intercalary. What are they? Apical, lateral, and intercalary. And permanent tissue can be divided into the simple and complex. Right? Now, this permanent tissue, simple and complex, further simple can be divided into three types: parenchyma, collenchyma, and sclerenchyma. And next, the permanent tissue is another type that is a complex. It has got the two types. That is a xylem and phloem. Now we'll discuss one by one. What are the apical? What are the lateral? What is the meristematic? First, that plant tissue. When we talk about the meristematic, meristematic means a part of the cells or the part of the plants which is continuously growing in the stage of growth. So meristematic tissue are those. Consist of cells, which is responsible for the continuous growth. For example, apical, then lateral and intercalary. Apical is concerned with the when that it is present in the tip of the plants. When the plant is growing continuously, then it is a responsible of the apical in the in the top of the plants. When the plant is growing uh, upwards, simultaneously it is also growing in the wider part. That is in the Broad parts in the breath. Those tissues are called the lateral. It means now we have talked apical in the tip of the plants, and the lateral is present in the depth of the plants. That is a width. Lateral, and then calls it the intercalary. Intercalary between the two nodes when there is a growth that is known as the intercalary. Right? In the permanent tissue, what happens? There are the two types of the there. One is a simple, another is a complex. Now we can ask me that, sir, if the permanent tissue is there, what is the permanent about the simple? What is the complex? 
simply it actually what defines it permanent tissue can be two types one is a simplest that is not very complicated one is a complicated that we call is the complex so the first is a simple simple for the can be divided into the parenchyma collenchyma and sclerenchyma your pronunciation should be very correct it is a parenchyma it is a collenchyma it is a sclerenchyma you just read and you pronounce twice or thrice that will be it's not very tough now parenchyma if i ask you what is a parenchyma in a plant one i say that is a it is a continuing growth stage but another aspect for the plant there certain function has to be performed for this permanent functions these uh, tissues are responsible first is a parenchyma majority of the plant contain this parenchyma cells it is a living cells there is a i have drawn for your understanding that is a parenchyma these cells are actually there is a intercellular space is there the cell wall is a soft so naturally these cells that is uh, these tissues are present mostly on the soft part of the plants it can be in the leaf it can it can be in the shoot or the any soft part of the plants then we comes to the collenchyma what is the collenchyma if you see the diagram of that you will see the cells are elongated elongated bit is a longer in size and this cell wall are thick in the collenchyma the cell wall are thick it consists of the pectin one substance is there pectin and cellulose and third is generally collenchyma is found under the epidermis epidermis means when we see the stem or any plants any parts of the plants in the outermost part we see the epidermis that is outer part of this plants is consist of epidermis below the epidermis we found that collenchyma third is the sclerenchyma what is the role of the sclerenchyma sclerenchyma generally is a dead cell right sclerenchyma is a generally dead cell and it is present generally in the non growing plant cells it is not growing it is almost in a stagnant stage these actually give the physical support or mechanical support you can say since these are the dead cells so naturally its outer boundary will be very tough so it gives it gives the strength of the or it gives the protection to the plants as far as the sclerenchyma is concerned now let us come to the complex complex there are the two types xylem and phloem uh you have studied in your early classes that the plant take the minerals and water from the soil then it goes to the plants in the in the leaves there is a process known as a photosynthesis means it is a preparing of the preparation of the foods in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll we have studied that so the required water and minerals how it comes to the leaf see if the plant is at 10 feet or 20 feet or 30 feet or 40 feet high in height then how the water from the ground it reaches to the 30 40 how it attains the height so here the responsible is a xylem xylem is a tube like structure due to the some kind of pressure the water draws from the soil water and minerals and it reaches to the different part of the plants and it is done by the xylem right it is a complex because xylem is made up of many parts we'll study in the later stages now comes to the phloem after attaining if once the water and minerals reaches to the different parts of the plants and photosynthesis takes place food is prepared now food has to be delivered in each and every part of the plants then who does it so this is the phloem which does this part which distribute the di prepared food to the different parts of the plants so it is i think it is not very complex complex uh, is a xylem and phloem xylem is a, another uh, responsible for the functions and phloem to carry the prepared food to the different part of the uh, plants so this is a nutshell of the tissue of the plant i said the tissue we studied that Um, the tissue concerned with the plant tissue today we have studied this please go through it and in the next day the remaining part of the this plant tissue and the we'll start with the animal tissue in the next chapter as usual every time i reminds please go through an ncert book line by line and word to word
and if you find any problem with the terminology or understanding i have given my phone number you can call me any time till then good day goodbye see you in the next class